Hey there everyone, it's Mr. Stubstep and today is another glorious day because we're opening up the 2023 Trainers Toolkit featuring Arceus, the creator of all. Everything you need to build a powerful deck. Let's see if that holds true, but before I get into this box, I am going to go over some pickups and I do want to let those know ahead of time if you're just like kind of swinging through trying to scoop up a code. The code itself for this box, I actually am going to keep myself because the deck that I'm currently running uses Arceus and I would like to have those on the online game. We'll be giving away the pack codes, but for the box itself, I will be keeping the code for myself. So if that's all you came here for, sorry, I'm not giving away this code this time. But yes, I'll have chapters down below like always. If you just want to go straight to the opening, I do have some pickups. I do want to get to show off my um, LGS pickups that I got for Crown Zenith. So basically, I went to their bulk box and I got a bunch of the reverse hollows that I needed. I can't remember how much they sell their reverse hollows for, but I think all these cards I paid around like $30, $40 for. So let me know how I did. I actually didn't count these up, but it's a good amount of cards. Um, and if there's any that are worth over a dollar, I'll make sure I have a note downstairs. I don't know why I said downstairs, but down below. And yeah, these are just cards that I was missing from my master set. So glad to add these all to the collection. So I was in an interesting conversation with them there because I was thinking about them like Crown Zenith Reverse Hollows are actually kind of hard to get because if you think about how many pulls can be pulled within the reverse slot, Crown Zenith Reverse Hollows become a lot more, I guess, hard to come by. For example, Scarlet Violet Base, you get two Reverse Hollows every single time unless, you know, one of them is a hit. But within Crown Zenith, like... It's probably, I mean, granted, it isn't like a super, super large set. It does have a massive glaring gallery, but those are just all singular cards. But the main set that has all the reverse halls, love that Mewtwo. Such a sick Mewtwo. Um, yeah, there's just not as common. Let me know if you already have a master set of Crown Zenith. I, uh, yeah, I want to collect one. I still need a couple gold cards and then, you know, a bunch of glaring gallery cards. But this pickup, I think, served pretty well. Um, and my LGS actually started because they've been having so many cards come in. Oh, love this Zamazenta. It's usually used in Lost Zone decks. It's a really good uh, comeback mechanic for kind of cleaning up at the end. Um, but they had a bunch of boxes laid out, and it was just like bulk ultra rares and bulk reverse hollows. And it was like, if it's in this color sleeve, it's a dollar. If it's in this color sleeve, it's two, three, five dollars. And they were just just a whole bunch of like slightly rare cards all mixed up and it's just so satisfying to go through all of those. I love just going through bulk cards. I would actually say one of my favorite pastimes is just organizing cards. Like right now I think a dream would be I just buy a lot of like a box full of loose cards and then I just have to organize them all into my collection or if I have any duplicates I sell them or whatever like that would just be so much fun to me. But yeah, getting into the trainers. And don't worry, I did get some glaring gallery cards, so these aren't just all boring reverse hollows, even though it will be very satisfying to fill my binder with all of these that I needed. I'd say majority of these were about a lightly played condition, just imagine them being in a box, you know, swooshing back and forth over and over again. Probably pack fresh, churned in to the shop for, you know, any type of month, in any type of funds. I think there's only doing like $8 per thousand, which is not the best. Is it $8 per thousand? Shoot, that might be the case. That is not a very good trade rate. And we did get the full art professor's research. Not super pricey. Unfortunately, Professor Roan isn't the most popular professor. I mean, he is the Gen 4 professor, but he's not my favorite professor. Oh, and then we are going to take some time to go through these. So we got the Cricketune singing its swelling tune, which is actually not bad if you're running a grass-type deck to add a little bit of extra HP. Got the gold bat hanging. Got the Emolga. We have the Stuffles and Wooloo and Komala and Shroomish and Bunnelby and more Wooloo and Emolga. And then we even have a, not a Rowlet, oh my gosh. Rufflet, Rufflet, jeez. Oh, we even got Lotad and then the Great Snom or Butt Cheek Face or whatever you want to call it. We got the Oracorio by Komia. Now, I like Komia's artworks, but this one isn't my favorite. I like it when Komia has the Pokemon kind of like farther back in the setting, but then you got some more Oreo Choreos up front as well. That Manaphy is so beautiful. You got the Pikapek, Pukamuku, Bruxish. Who else we got in here? We have the Wishy Washies and the uh, Toxapex. But then if you look closely, there's like the, the swarming, forming, norming, storming uh, <laughs> Wishy Washy. I don't know why I just went through those. But, uh,. Yeah, really awesome artwork. And Manaphy is a great card. Got the Diancy. These are actually all pretty competitive cards. That Princess's Curtain. Got the Magnazone with the Magnemites and the Magneton at the bottom. I don't know if there's any other secret special Pokemon in here. Got the Altaria 
with the tempting tune. I know a lot of people that collect these types of artworks, which I don't blame them. They are really cute. The clay and the crochet type ones. Got the Hisuian Gudra with the Starlies. Like, I feel like Hisuian Gudra is like, this is like at the start of like a video game or a movie. Like it just landed somewhere or it's trying to crawl up somewhere and everyone's like, do you know where you're at? We have the Dunsparces. The Dunspy or the Dunsparces? Just all chilling in the room. Got the one back there. Look like an Amistar right there. Yeah, no, this is, I got a Pokeball in the basket. And then there's some drawings up there. I don't know if that's like another Dunsparce and then a person or a Squirtle. I can't tell what that is. Got the Bee Barrel. I was, it was fun getting this card because this is the, this is the exact uh, artwork that I run in my deck on PCTGL, which is kind of funny. You can see all the Bee Doofs. They, the Bee Doofs kind of have those crazy eyes going on. Got the Swablu, beautiful, pure artwork. And then here is that wonderful Bee Doof that I have in my deck as well with that Carefree Countenance. Cannot be attacked. Pikachu, beautiful. The most expensive out of this, like, picture. If you put them all together, it's a picture. And they're all by Kuki Saito. So that's kind of cool. And the final one is the Puchiena. And that is all my Crown Zenith pickups. I know that was a lot, but I did want to give those Glaring Galleries some time because they are such beautiful, intricate artworks. And, yeah, super excited to fill my binder with those. Now we can get into this. I'll have the prices down, the price I paid down below. And I think this will replace the blue one that I'm currently using to carry all my stuff when I go to like tournaments and stuff like that and pre-releases. But there are all the contents. And these aren't my favorite artworks ever, but they are different, so I do appreciate that. So let's open this up. All right, that one is also a sleeve that just comes right off. Oh man. Yeah, it has like that goldish yellow, which I think is kind of cool. All right, so I guess we'll start with the sleeves. Okay, these will be really cool to have on the online game. I still think the best sleeves of all time for these is the first trainer toolkit that came out. I'm almost tempted just to like buy the code for that one because that one is pretty wicked if you ask me. We do have the code which I'm setting to the side and then we have the brick that contains all of the cards in here. So let me see if I can find the pull tab. There we go. Got the pull tab, slide that off. And let's go through this. The Arceus V Star, probably not the best deck in standard format right now, but it still has it still has its place. And that Trinity Nova and Starbirth, I use that all the time with my Arceus Reggie Drago deck. And then we have this, which actually this artwork isn't that bad. Now I think these are these gonna be the last Sword and Shield promos? I don't know. They're pretty high up there in number. They're in the three hundreds and they're even past the illustration art ones. And let's see if we got any good trainers. We even have some Scarlet and Violet in here, which is cool. Those ultra balls are always handy. Rare candies, super handy. A, we got more of the deck exclusives, so it, pretty much any rares from Scarlet and Violet on, if they're non-hollow, they're gonna be deck exclusives because all of them are hollows now, so that's really cool. Probably gonna put some of those on my store. These are all super useful trainer cards. Pal Pad for getting supporters back in. Nest Ball, since Quick Ball doesn't exist. Jacques is solid for getting Evolution Pokemon. Electric Generator, really good in the Maridon decks. Beach Court, good in the Maridon decks and Lost Bok decks. Arvin, just really solid for, you know, getting stuff going. Thornton, I've seen a lot of decks play this and a lot of people don't expect it, but it's choose a basic Pokemon in your discard pile and switch it with one of your basic Pokemon in play. Any attached cards, damage counter, special conditions, turns in play, um, and any other effects remain on the new Pokemon, which is kind of cool. Lost Vacuum, really solid for getting rid of stadium, stadiums and tool cards that are attached to Pokemon, or I guess it's, it's tools, right? Yeah, and putting those in the Lost Zone increase. Trekking Shoes, Classic. I don't know if people like these trekking shoes or the Crown Zenith ones better. Double Turbo Energy. Definitely use these in my Arceus deck. Roxanne. Really good comeback mechanic, but now Iono, so there might be less Roxannes in decks. Roseanne's backup. Not used too often. Erida. Really good in the Bax Caliber deck now because you can search your deck for a water Pokemon and an item card. So basically, if you have the Frigibax, you put it into play, you can get Rare Candy and the Bax Caliber and you have Bax Calibre turn two if you want. So that's kind of cool. Heavy Ball, always solid for getting those essential basics out of the discard pile, or discard pile, out of the prize prizes. Gutsy Pickaxe, now that Ting Lu has had a force, Gutsy Pickaxe is good for going through the deck and maybe sliding some energies along the way. Magma Basin, good for the fire decks. Those new Charizards that are coming out soon, Magma Basin could be doing something good. Gardenia's Vigor, kind of tempted to build a Wu Chin and Fortress EX decks and maybe do something with Gardenia's Vigor just to attach even more energies. Gloria is, I haven't really seen too much Gloria use, I'm gonna be honest, Dark Patch, amazing for darkness decks. Just shame that Metal Saucer doesn't exist. Got Cynthia's Ambition, not bad, not bad. Got Sharon's Care, 
This one can, can be kind of slick. You can get your Lugia out of play if it's damaged. And then Boss's Order Cyrus. I believe this is a deck exclusive. Or maybe the Hollow is a deck exclusive. I'm not sure. But those are really cool. Really good trainer cards there. There's only a couple that don't really see too much play. But all of those were really solid. And we have a nice, thick, solid, tight brick of the newest energy. I always like to keep at least one from each generation like this. And maybe like one or two from some uh, elite trainer boxes. I don't know. I have so much energy already, so if I don't use them to like do stuff with my sales and stuff like that or whatever for organization, there, there's just so much energies. We have the V-Star. I still haven't seen a unique V-Star marker, so hopefully one day. Oh, one of these. Okay, I need, to, I need to remember to save this because my stuff is so disorganized in my other one because I just threw this away, but this is actually useful for keeping this stuff organized, so I'm actually going to save that in there. We have the status condition markers. And then looks like we have some packs. Is there anything else? Oh, we got the trainer's toolkit as well. Make sure there's nothing else in there. And then there's a the little bit of organizer. So you can like put decks and stuff in here and then other miscellaneous stuff or however you want to do it. Ah, trainer's toolkit, deck builder's guide. Yay. Arceus with Giratina, Pikachu and Raichu. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it shows you all the stuff that you. Oh, it gives you an example of a deck that you can make or whatever. Doesn't it? That'd be cool if it came with all like the Giratinas and stuff like that. Yeah, they're doing the Giratina Arceus. That's that's pretty crazy. Sweet. All right, and we do have four packs. We have Paldea Evolved, Paldea Evolved, Scarlet and Violet, and Silver. T oh shoot! I thought I watched a video on this and it was Brilliant Stars. Okay, I was actually fully prepared prepared to put the Brilliant Stars in my giveaway pile, but maybe that was the uh, the tins that are coming out. I should have those two tins, the Maridon and Caridon tins. I should have those coming in very soon, probably early next week. So look forward to a video on those as well. But we do have all these four packs and I do get to open all of them. So I guess I'll do Silver Tempest, Paul Day Evolved, Scarlet and Violet Base, and then finish up with that Silver Tempest. Let's put that box up there. I did change the background, so I am including that Paul Day Evolved Pokemon Center Elite Trainer box, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> um, I stopped doing the sticker thing because I was getting like no feedback from it. So I was like, oh, I guess I mean, which I also kind of understand, because sometimes the Elite Trainer boxes look cool, and putting a sticker on them kind of ruins the artwork, so. V-Guard energy is amazing. Man, regenerative energy, eh, it's a special energy, but not used too much. Man, what could we get in Silver Tempest? So many potential things. I could pull Curlia. No, nope, no reverse Curlia, but we do get that Delphox, which I've played plenty, I've pulled plenty of this Delphox, but it's still beautiful. And we have a Paldea Evolved, which is really nice. That Skeledurge pack artwork. I did catch up on Demon Slayer. I guess there will be another episode at the time of filming this this weekend since I'm filming this on a Saturday and it usually comes out on Sunday. So I am going to keep one Paul Day Evolved code for myself just to, you know, get some more packs in the online game and I'll give away the remain. Oh, I forgot there's no pack tricks with Paul Day Evolved. I'm dumb, but Jet Energy, super solid. Um, you can use this on a lot of different decks, but it, make, it basically means you need one less switch card, which is really nice. You got the Frigibax, just talking about you Frigibax. Another, another Gyarados, so maybe we can go through the rest of this, because, yeah. Corvusquire, nice. And then another Jet Energy, and the fa Fighting Aule, or Aulate, or something like that. But another Jet Energy, sweet. Now I have both Jet Energies, that's cool. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of Paldea Evolved overall. I think a lot of people are kind of saying that it's lackluster, at least from the, the collector's point of view, which I guess I kind of understand. But there's still so many sick artworks within this set. Like, I know the pull rates haven't been the best, I guess, from what people have seen and everything. But I don't know. It still looks like a cool set. I'm excited to at least open up the booster box and everything. So, oh, Reverse Professor's Research. Okay. We got the Wiglet, Wiglet Wig, and the Maridon Hollow. Nice. Okay. We have one more pack of Paldea Evolved. Um, yeah, I think I think I did talk about Demon Slayer already. Sorry, I think I might have cut myself off. But yeah, Demon Slayer and it should be having another episode this weekend, as well as One Piece. Um, because of the Netflix thing, I'm going to have to find a way to continue JoJo's Bizarre Adventure since I don't have access to Netflix anymore until I get my own Netflix account like a big boy. But yeah, there is that. And then still continuing to do some job searches and job interviews and all that stuff. Hopefully I should hear back by Tuesday about my previous job interview and if they would like to see me further in anything. Will there be any pulls from this opening? I don't know. Practice Studio and the Weavile. Okay, that's not a bad artwork. I like that one. And then there is the final code for y'all. But yeah, overall, 
you know, no crazy hits, but we did get two awesome promos to add to the collection. Maybe to close out Sword and Shield, unless they do like some last minute promo stuff like they did with uh, the Golden Charizard and Golden Pikachu and Zekrom um, for Sun and Moon. So we'll see. There, there's always there's always a chance for outlying promos, but yeah, that's actually all I have for this video. I know it was really long for the Trainer's Toolkit, but I wanted to give some time to those Crown Zenith singles that I picked up. And yeah, Paul Day of is out and a lot of people are starting to make new decks. It's super exciting. The, uh, the meta is super fresh and everything and people are trying out some new stuff, so. Yeah, please let me know what you're running and what you have going on in general in life. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought, and I'll catch you all in the next one.